and welcome back um, to a, another video. Um, you know, uh, most of you have probably seen the channel's hit 108 subscribers with triple digits. <laughs> I was just as surprised as you guys were when one night I looked at my YouTube channel and saw 100. You know, when I started out YouTube, I never actually thought I'd get to be triple digits, but we finally got there, so marvellous. I'm, I'm extremely happy about that, so thank you to everybody. Thank you for um, everyone who's been here ever since the beginning, and even if you've just joined us on the Mr. Muffin Trains channel, thank you very much. Um, you're welcome, a lot of you, so um, make yourself comfy and enjoy more reviews to come. Um, so the model I have here today, you probably can see in the title what it is, but um, for those of you who can't read, or if you can't, and you um, didn't look, or you just didn't look at the title, don't look at it, because it'll be a surprise. Um, I've always wanted this model, and ever since I got into model railways, I've, um, I've always wanted one, but in England, they are 80 pounds, but in New Zealand, um, having your money changed from New Zealand dollars to pounds um, costs quite a fair bit. So there are 180 dollars over here, but I found this. It's not Hornby, it's not Dapple, in fact it's no brand, it's scratch built. This is the only version like it in the world. There's no other variant. It's not a kit. No, nope, not a kit at all. It's just been scratch built from metal and it's made of die cast metal. The whole thing is die cast metal. Real copper. Die cast metal. Um so yeah, and um I'm extremely impressed with it. I got this for um it was thirty-two pounds and I got it for a hundred, um, no, not a hundred, um, sixty, sixty-eight NZD, or New Zealand dollar. Wow, so, you know, I got just what I'm after for a much cheaper price. You can just see it in the light there. Excuse the noise of the fan, it is summertime over in New Zealand, and we are baking over here, official. Uh, yes, we are baking. Uh, not baking cookies, I mean us humans are baking over here, shivers. Could you turn down the, the heat a bit? Um, so just a little look at the overall detail on the model. Um, it's got real coupling hooks on it, as you can see. Real coupling hooks. No D-shaped couplings on here, so we can't couple up for any coaches, but look at that. Nicely um, hook and couple. And uh, we've got the hook on the front there. And also, you can see this. Turn the model side on. Now I want you to look at this. The buffers are all sprung. So I don't think the, the Hornby or Daypole Terriers have sprung buffers. I, uh, I wouldn't recall them having that. Uh, and then you've got some real coal, I believe the whole bunker is filled up with coal, so it's not just the top. Um, you can probably see the motor in the cab. It's um, the model's cab does do a reasonably good job at hiding it. Now, I'm not bothered that there's no uh, room for crew, as you know. I get my little crew member right there, and I just sort of so I'll just get a lump of blue tack and stand them there. But uh, yeah, um, this has been painted, hand painted, um, and it's in the LVSCR in Improved Engine Green Livery. Now it's a bit strange as the Improved Engine Green, um, there's actually, if you look at it, not very much green. Things are sort of just outlined in green, sort of mainly um, the ochre, the ochre, um, the ochre livery. Um, some people say Stroudy was colour blind, while well, um, I, I think that um, he just um, was inspired by liveries from the Highland Railway. Uh, so he used, William Stroudy, the designer of the Terriers, used to be the um, chief mechanical engineer of the Highland Railway. And then he went to the LBSCR, and I forget what year, I think it was 1879. These were the first locomotives he designed. I think Box Hill was built in 
1880 on August 20th. Yeah, that's when we, that's when she was completed. We've got a nice wee Westinghouse pumps and handrails. Nice 82 on number plate there and Box Hill printed in big letters on the side. We got some wheels um, down there. Uh, these are not Honda wheels, they are Pico. I forget what they're called. We got the ladder there. You turn around, and in transit, one of the ladders did come off. But that's fine, as I have some some uh, some glue for that, so I can I can just easily repair that. So that's not a bother at all. Um, yeah, uh, some nice handrails there, and uh, <laughs> the condensing pipe. Now the condensing pipe is a quite an interesting piece. Well, the condensing gear is quite an interesting piece of equipment. Uh, it can heat the water in the tanks before it goes into the boiler, saving the need to um well cuts down um water boiling time but if a terrier stopped quickly water would surge forward and go out the uh, out the chimney so i wouldn't want to be standing near an a1 terrier when it did that now uh when douglas marsh of the lbscr and i forget what year 1912 he rebuilt most of these to um to the A1X, so basically, uh, see these sort of splashes on the side of the smoke box here. He took those away, uh, moved the smoke box, well, put a bigger smoke box on. No, he didn't put a bigger one on, he just added an extension, took the sand boxes and put them underneath there. And this did make them look a lot more modern. And uh, if you go to places such as the Bluebell Railway, uh, you can find uh, Stepney, who was an A1X um, form, and then there's Finchurch, who was an A... Did I say Stepney was an A1 form? No, Stepney is an A1X form, and Finchurch is an A1 form. So you can sort of compare the both of them. And our Box Hill, thank goodness, she is preserved at National Railway Museum. So if you live in York, or you're going to York, Keep an eye out for her, and maybe if you have Instagram, um, link me in the photo to it. And I'll, as I'd like to say, Instagram is Mr Muffin underscore YouTube. Should see me. I think I have this girl. This girl is my profile picture. So we're getting up to seven minutes. We've got a, a little mindless dribble going on. Uh, so we'll pop her on the track. Actually, just before we do. Another interesting fact about Box Hill is she was um, rebuilt to a um, to a 240 tank. Uh, she was originally an 060, and then Douglas Marsh uh, rebuilt her into um, not a A1X but into a um, 240 tank. So uh, she just had these driving wheels, and this is for for experimental reasons and. Um, for push-pull trains and that. And she was rebuilt back in 1913. She was built to a 240 tank in 1912 and rebuilt back to um, an 060 tank in 1913. Righto, uh, I think that's enough of that. Let's go pop her on the tracks. Okay, uh, here we are. We're down on the layout and we've got Box Hill down here. And um, we can better than ever, I'll just turn the lights off above me, excuse the shot of the camera, that didn't help much, let's just try and get some better light, I think that's the best we're going to get, I think that improved a little bit, uh, yeah, so there she is down on the tracks, now I'll just get a piece of rolling stock somewhere, so um, just um, Wait right after the jump cut as I want to show you how small these actually are. So if I just move alongside we've got our measuring equipment, we have this three of Ginty in the Mark II. Let's pop the Mark II over there. Pop the uh sorry about my freckly hand. And then we'll get the um two side by side. So there you go look pretty small to each other so you can actually see just how short 
The Terry is not. Not tall. Sure. Uh, yeah. Quite a fair bit of a difference there, so I'll just move this away. And pop the Terry back on the track. Excuse the shoddy camera work. signals in the way. There we are. So now you can see how tall they are between a coach. Yeah. Give you a pretty good look on how small the terriers are. That's just to show you how small they are in case you didn't know. So I'll just clean all this stuff out of the way and I'll wait after the jump cut and we'll be ready to run. Ready to run. Right, um, I hope I've got the right controller. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Now she's actually not noisy. She stopped. Now just excuse the track. I have not been good. I have not been a good model and I have not seen it. So in case she stops, we'll just run around this part. She's kind of on some more dirty track. Yeah, I did say I do need to clean it. Um, because this video is dragging on a bit, I'll make a part two for it, or something that's uh, just a designated uh, running for the terrier. Because I don't think we quite have time in this video. There's uh, my editing software on the allows me to do, I think, 13 minutes of film before it complains of it being too long, and YouTube only allows 15 minutes of video. So we'll make a part two. Thank you for watching anyway, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, guys.